Did you know that you can slipstream and draft off other swimmers and swim faster? Or expend less energy for the same speed? And it's legal. Yeah, completely unlike the cycling discipline of triathlon, where drafting other cyclists is completely illegal and punishable by disqualification, in swimming, drafting is totally fine. Yeah, now, obviously, it's not exactly something we see commonly in the swimming pool, but in the open water, it is commonplace. So what exactly is drafting and how do we do it when swimming? First off, let's explain the science here a little because it is slightly different to the way in which we draft whilst cycling. So that lead swimmer, as they swim through the water, they lower the water's pressure, making it easier for the drafting swimmer to swim and pass through the water or allowing them to swim faster. In slightly more simple terms, they're essentially a displacement vessel, a little bit like a snow plow clearing the snow ahead of you on the road. In addition to that, that lead swimmer creates a bow wave and that moves at an angle relative to the direction of the swimmer and increases in size with the size of the swimmer and the speed that they're moving at. And that drafting swimmer can essentially surf that bow wave, reducing the energy required by around 20 to 30%. So how do you get this draft? Well, in the open water, you've got kind of two options, either swimming directly behind, so on the feet, or just off to the side, otherwise known as on the hips. In the swimming pool, drafting is kind of less common. You don't really get the same benefit, but you can get a very minimal benefit by sort of swimming just to the side and on someone's hips who's in another lane. That's if there's quite a thin lane rope in between you. One thing the two options have in common is the closer you can get to that swimmer you're drafting, as long as you're not disrupting their stroke, the greater the benefit will be. And you've got two options. If you find someone who's a similar pace to you and you're drafting off them, then you can swim at your normal pace with far less effort, so it feels quite easy. Or you've got the option of finding someone who's a little bit quicker and you then swim at your usual effort, which will be taking you at a faster pace. And usually that's the best option for racing, but you do need to be very self-aware of your own pace so that you're not pushing it too hard, but you're still getting that benefit. Okay, so let's take a look at drafting on the feet directly behind the other swimmer. Now, to get an effective draft on the feet, ideally you want to be within one to two feet of their feet. Sorry if this feet chat is getting very confusing. Now, ideally you don't want to be tapping their feet on every single stroke, otherwise you could end up slowing them down by disrupting their kick, you could end up just distracting them or simply annoying them immensely. I will be honest, I did use to tap the feet of someone that I was drafting every so often, but then I don't have many friends these days. In my defense, I didn't used to do it on every single stroke, but I was close enough that I would get a good draft and obviously I wasn't trying to tap their feet. It wasn't intentional, but it may just happen. I think you get the picture and I think I've now apologized to anyone out there that I may have annoyed over the years. Whereas drafting on the hips requires you to swim to the side of the lead swimmer. So placing your head as close as you can to their hips. So you're riding that wave that we've talked about. It is only small, but you will feel it when you've got there. And again, like with any type of drafting, the closer you can get, the better. However, you need to be very careful that you don't get in the way of their stroke, because obviously being very close to their arms, that could get quite annoying. And it's quite a good idea to breathe towards the swimmer you're drafting, at least every now and then, so you can make sure that you're staying that correct distance away from them. So, which one? I mean, both sound like great methods and options for drafting, but does one have benefits over the other? And when should you choose one over the other two? Yeah, it's tough because there are pros and cons to both. When it comes to drafting on the hips, you get the biggest advantage that way. However, you are affecting the swimmer that you're drafting off because they will be a slight drag and they will feel that. They'll know you're there, plus you're risking getting in the way of their straight rhythm if you're interfering with their arms. So when it comes to drafting off the feet, the swimmer in front will not notice you at all unless you're tickling toes, like Mark has Sorry. admitted to sometimes. Um, so they won't mind at all, but you will get less of a benefit. That said though, if you want to work together with a swimmer to say bridge a gap or make a get an advantage you're best to go one behind the other yeah and then with that also you want to consider your body position and how drafting may affect your 
own stroke. So we would advise that when you swim, you're looking directly down beneath you for a good body position. Now, obviously, when you're drafting off someone's feet, you may feel that you need to look up to keep track of where they are and make sure that you're close to their feet. And that could, in turn, obviously affect your body position. Whereas, drafting on someone's hips, you've got continual sight of them to your side and therefore should be able to swim pretty normally. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, you've got the advantages in open water that a wetsuit can help sort of counteract your hip position, but also you can start to get used to feeling that there's someone's feet there without touching their feet. But just by that disturbance in the water, you'll soon, the more you do it, the more you'll get used to, and you'll only have to look up once or twice to check that you're on the right feet. Yeah, and talking of bubbles and disturbance of water, and some of you may have experienced this before, if you are swimming behind someone with a very strong leg kick, you may find it incredibly hard to draft off them. And that is because they're creating enough disturbance of that water and enough propulsion with their leg kick that it makes it incredibly hard to actually sit behind them to get that draft. And also it's disrupting the water that you are trying to pull against and get propulsion from yourself. And this is something you may have also experienced this at the start of a race start when everyone's fighting position and kicking very hard. So back to the original question, when should you use and choose one over the other? Well, I'm afraid it still isn't black and white, but we do have a recommendation for you. So if you've got the option to get on the hips and it's not something you're trying to work with, then do that. You get the most advantage there. If that pace is a bit too quick or you're not managing to stay there, then slip back and try and stay on the feet for as long as you can. If you're in a situation where you're in a breakaway or in a group with a few people and you are naturally working together, then in that situation, make it easier for each other and help each other by going on the feet. Yeah, now, if you find yourself in a mass of swimmers, then I'd always say, go for the hips, providing you're happy to do so. And with that, it may mean that you find yourself in different formations, which we'll run through now. There's, of course, the simple hip draft of one other swimmer, as we've described. There's also the triangular formation, where two swimmers ride the wake on either side of the lead swimmer. And then we have the diamond formation, a swimmer on either side of the lead swimmer and then one tucked in behind. As that last swimmer in this diamond formation, you are in the ultimate position. Not only do you get a draft of the lead swimmer, but also the two swimmers on either side. Of course, all of this does take a fair amount of practice and ideally you want to be practicing in the open water outside of a race scenario so you can get comfortable with it. But you can also gain quite a lot from practicing in a swimming pool because it's that sort of controlled environment. If you've got a club setting, you can find some other people in which to do that. Yeah, now obviously you won't have the option of where and how these groups form during a race. So it's really important that you're comfortable with all the formations and comfortable with it adapting. So as Heather says, try and practice as much as possible with your training partners, with friends, in the open water and even the pool. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video and gained a lot from it. Do let us know how you get on and if you do draft currently and how you find that in the comment section down below. And make sure you give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe.